Okay, today is day 17 of my first 30 days into the carnivore diet with no carbs and no alcohol. And if you want some context and like an hour long, literally, of the backstory of my healing journey, you can go check that video out. I'll link it in the description because uh, this will probably make more sense if you've seen that first. But I noticed a couple things recently that I think would be good to report and hopefully will be encouraging if anyone else is, is or has been feeling uh, this way. And I'm going to try to explain something that I think it's connected to, which is pure speculation on my part, but it's also something that I see connected in my own life. And that is having a cloud over your, your consciousness in a way that I was describing in my healing journey as a sense of apathy and maybe slightly depression, but always usually anxiety, but just those kinds of struggles that I've had, you know, at more, more or less at different times in my life, but pretty much consistently. I've always kind of struggled with, um, just feeling like I have motivation, like I have drive. I've always had a sense of that there is something purposeful that I need to be doing with my life, but I couldn't ever put a finger on that. I had terrible shiny object syndrome, like jumping around from thing to thing, which in a sense is good because it allows you to explore and, and figure out what you do like and what your interests are and maybe what you're not interested in anymore. And so part of that's good, but I, I recognized at a point in my life that there that this was causing me to sort of self-sabotage and to not have success at anything I was doing because I was not being consistent and I was not being real with myself about what, you know, self-discipline and, and the things that it takes to be successful at anything were. I was allowing myself to stray and jump all over the place and I was using that as an excuse for why I wasn't able to, you know, be successful at some of the things that I've tried in my life and, and there have been many things. And so I want to connect that idea to some actual things that I've been experiencing lately now that I'm more than two weeks and almost to my three week mark with no carbs, no alcohol, a strict carnivore diet. And I'll take a minute here to pause and just tell you what I'm eating because I'm eating, I'd say 80 to 90% beef. I eat some chicken and some pork and rarely, but I, I sometimes eat eggs. Eggs don't always agree with me. And so I will eat an egg maybe once or twice a week, a couple eggs or so and butter. And then I'm just drinking water with electrolytes that I add when I feel like I need them. And then coffee. I still have coffee and I'm putting some heavy cream in my coffee. But I've cut out all other dairy. And um, I had a little bit of mozzarella, I will be honest. But I used to eat a lot of cheese and a lot of dairy. And I've cut that out. And so that's, you know, however strict you think that is for carnivore, that's basically what I've been eating. And... Uh, so no side bites of anything else and no alcohol. And I've noticed that I had one of those light switch moments the other day where it's like something just turned on in my brain and it was mood related. It was like I woke up and I felt like I want to get up today and I want to go do this. And I would, it would be something that I normally have a lot of anxiety around. And I realized, oh, the anxiety is not really there. I mean, it was there a little bit, but it wasn't like the anxiety that I would normally feel. And I just, it, it sort of caught me off guard. And I thought, this, this is so interesting. And I, and I want to draw this line to what I was trying to explain in the beginning, which is like in this social media world, in this modern world that we're living in, we always see things about, well, you know, don't, you shouldn't care what people think. Don't look to the external for validation. And I think that's good advice for the most part. I mean, everything is reciprocal in some form or fashion. Everything has two sides and there's always two ways to look at everything. But I think in the context of the modern world and, and the way we oftentimes relate with each other, there there's so much bait to kind of look at that external validation and judge ourselves based on what other people are saying about us and our mood is affected by that. And so I've been really thinking about how 
diet relates to all of this because I, there, there were things that would affect me so much more in the past and things that I would be afraid to do or afraid to say or the conversations that I'd be afraid to have because I was so concerned with uh, how I was going to appear, how I was going to be perceived, how everyone else was going to react to me. Not that we should just all be going out and you know, not thinking and then just blabbering everything, the first thing that comes to our minds, but we also shouldn't be so afraid to be who we truly are because of what other people are going to think or say. And I and I just think it's so interesting because I, everything I see related to this is is coming from sort of like the personal development world, which I am a fan of. I, I love reading that type of material. I study that stuff a lot. But it's in this sort of way like, well, you should just be able to control that and stop caring what other people think if you're truly being your authentic self and you want to be creative and express yourself in this certain way, then you should just stop caring. And I think maybe for some people that's just naturally more difficult than it is for other people. But I also think that there is like a nutritional component to this. And that is what I'm experiencing again. I kind of got this light bulb switch turned on the first time I did carnivore where it's like my mind was just clear I could see and rationalize what was going on around me so much more clearly because I it's like that fog of of this sort of apathetic, you know, n- very neutral in a way where it was like I it was very difficult for me to feel one way or another about something. Like that was lifted away and I started to just my mood was just higher in general. Like my baseline mood was higher. And then when I got pregnant, I sort of got what they call pregnancy brain and all this stuff where you just, I just felt stupid. You know, I just felt like, wow, I can't remember what they ordered or I can't, I couldn't remember like at work, I'd be like, well, I know I have drinks to pick up from the bar, but then I need to run this app and then I, and like put this order in, but I need to go grab a side of sauce. And it's like, I, It's like it could not, my brain couldn't compute it, you know what I mean, the same way that it did before. And so that was one of the major contrasts that I noticed too from being carnivore and having this clarity and having this improvement in mood. And then kind of, again, like I talked about more in detail in my healing story, like taking 10 steps back in some form because it was like, oh, I just feel stupid and I'm slow again and my brain's not functioning right. And so now I'm getting like the light switch turned back on finally again, where I just feel like, oh my gosh, I can process my thoughts in a, in such a more rational way. Whereas before it would be much more emotional. So I would take things personally much more easily. I would have a fear of being who I truly am and expressing myself in an authentic way because there was like this layer of insecurity and, and anxiety and being unsure of myself and not knowing who I really was. And I think a lot of it had to do with what I was putting in my body because this is the second time now where I felt like that shift in my brain where it's like, there will be a moment where it's like a, a, a knee jerk reaction or a reflex to go back to that ingrained pattern of this is how I perceive this. And this is how I internalize this. This is how I, look at like a news article and I, this is the spiral that I go down automatically. And so there'll be that, but then there'll also be a time lately where I can just pause and be like, Hey, like get super objective about it and say, okay, this is the reality, but what does this actually mean for my life? What, what does this actually mean for my relationship? What does this actually mean for, you know, what I care about, what my goals are, whatever it might be related to. And that process just happens faster and with less emotional distress. And I hope this is making sense because I'm kind of drawing a lot of parallels here that I'm hoping that it makes sense. But I think that there truly is, at least from my experience, a nutritional component to outlook and to whether the cup is half full or half empty or whether you even care if there's anything in the cup or not or how you know how we manage like 
conversations in our relationships is a big one. You know, I notice that my communication is getting clearer. I'm able to process my thoughts and how I am feeling and and maybe express that in a way that's more coherent and less kind of like emotionally disruptive. And I don't know, maybe you can ask my partner how he feels about that. But I just feel like I've had a lot more productive conversation lately, whether that's in my own journaling time, whether I'm, you know, looking at my goals in my life and looking at some decisions that we have coming up, all that kind of stuff. It's it's like slowly moving away from being much more emotionally based, much more fear based into a place of just power in a sense that I'm in control now of how I react to the things and the stimulus in my life versus I felt very not in control of that in the past and I didn't realize how not in control of it I was. I thought I was in control, but now looking back, it's like, Nia, you were just reacting to everything from a fear-based mindset or from a mindset of here's my wall. I'm not going to let anyone pass this wall because of, you know, hurts or whatever I'm carrying from the past. And so like, it slowly creeps up on me, but then there'll be these light bulb moments where I can just see everything completely differently. And I can see the gaps in my own understanding and my own knowledge. And it's like, where where do I need to change my ideas here? Or where do I need to um, be more open? Or where do I need to blah, 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 whatever it might be. And I just think that's so incredible because, and, and this is why I get so passionate about this diet is because, again, not that everyone needs to eat this way, not that everyone needs to be a strict carnivore, but I just like, I, I keep, I'm more and more blown away the more I get back into this by what a difference it makes in many different areas of my life. And this is one of the things that I'm noticing lately is that I'm just calmer. I just see things more clearly and rationally. And while I still have, you know, there's a, going to be an emotional component to anything. And, and that's not bad. It's, it's good. But which, which thing is controlling you? And are you aware of that? And how are you making decisions? Are they based on fe- in fear? Or are they based in faith or opportunity or your vision for your life and your purpose? And every time, and if you have a vision for your life and you are working towards something, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be fear. There's going to be other people's opinions. There's going to be other people, you know, telling you what they think you should do. And how do you handle that? Well, you got to, you got to be able to see it clearly. You've got to be able to recognize what are my emotions? What, where are these coming from? What is that attached to? Why might I be re- wanting to react this way? And should I? And maybe the answer sometimes is yes, I should react this way. And maybe the answer is no, I should choose a different way this time. And being able to observe that in yourself and make those kind of decisions is where I think peace comes from in a lot of situations because it's easy to react to something and then go back and say, oh, I should have said this, or I should have said that, or I should have said this differently, or I should have, you know, explained myself or defended myself in this way. And again, not all of our communication is always going to be perfect. And yes, looking back and saying, how could I have done this better is important to do sometimes. But you know what I'm getting at? That can also become a spiral that, that we get into. And that can be really, really hard to get out of. And it can be really, really stressful to always be like micromanaging everything I just did yesterday or, or whatever. And I think that's, that's when I say anxiety, that's kind of what I'm describing is like a very active, overly analytical at sometimes mind that just can't turn off and let it go. You know what I mean? And so that is something that I'm noticing now is that that is that process is getting easier for me. And in some t- sometimes it's surprisingly easy for me to do. And so I think I'll just, you know, wrap that up for today. Um, again, I'm day 17 like this, and I um, will probably maybe make a video at, at three weeks and definitely at 30 days. 
and talk about some more things that I've experienced. But, uh, you know, full disclaimer at the end, again, I don't think everybody needs to do this. I don't think everyone needs to do this forever. But I think if you're curious and you want to know, hey, how good could I feel? Would, would cutting out some of the things in my diet affect my mood and my happiness and my, like I was saying, a baseline kind of level of where I sit? It's kind of interesting to try it out and see. And so I'm curious to know if, you know, if you've been on this diet, have you noticed any changes in your mental health or your mood or your outlook on life? I know, again, in my uh, healing journey video, I touched on that where being sick and being scared of food and being anxious all the time about when I was going to get sick or am I going to break out in psoriasis? What's going to happen to me? It, It took a lot of the life out of my life and it made me skeptical that I could ever achieve anything. It made me afraid that I would never develop the discipline and the the dedication to continue pursuing something that I was interested in and actually fulfill it and, and complete something. And now I'm starting to see elements of that return into my life and the and the confidence and the stamina and the energy to do what it takes to, you know, build the life that you know, I'm trying to build and you're trying to build your life. And so having, having that, having the confidence and the faith in yourself to go for things is, is so incredibly important. And so I just, I'll leave that there for my comments on this today and I hope everyone's doing well. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.